Nikita, a software product marketing engineer at Intel. Curious about how to accelerate your C++ application with the various hardware accelerators found in your PC and server? Intel One API DB C++ library or One DPL lets you write C++ standard template library or STL styled code that can easily run in parallel on multi-core CPUs and accelerate on GPUs and FPGAs. DPC++, the short of Data Parallel C++, is the One API implementation of Sickle programming framework. Let me tell you more about One DPL in this video. I will talk about the major component APIs of One DPL, that is Parallel API for parallel programming with C++ STL styled code, Sickle Kernels API to accelerate C++ STL styled code on GPUs, and Device Selection API to control how sickle kernels are scheduled to the available compute resources. The Parallel API component enables parallel and vectorized implementation of C++17 standard library algorithms. It also offers C++ with sickle-based device execution policies that specify where and how a parallel algorithm runs in a heterogeneous environment. It provides asynchronous algorithms as an extension of C++17 blocking parallel algorithms and range-based algorithms introduced by C++20. Both the async and the range-based API implementations are limited to device execution policies. Additionally, there are custom iterators and few miscellaneous algorithms to perform operations on keys and values of an input sequence. With algorithm extensions of Parallel STL and Boost.Compute Parallel Computing Libraries, One DPL accelerates cross-architecture programming. Here are the One DPL APIs for use in sickle kernels. Certain C++ standard APIs tested to be employed in device kernels. Random number generators including engines to generate unsigned integer sequences of random numbers that can also be converted into statistical distributions and classes defining utility function objects applied to the input arguments. The library's integration with the Intel DPC++ compatibility tool and its open source counterpart Cyclomatic enables easy CUDA to Sickle code migration. An experimental yet important feature added to the 1DPL version 2022.3 is the Dynamic Selection API. It lets you choose execution resources based on a particular selection policy. By default, it selects Sickle Q as the compute resource. Let us understand how different selection policies work through an analogy of beach balls representing workloads being assigned to the boxes representing compute resources. Fixed resource policy always chooses the same resource for a given workload. As you can see, the fourth green colored workload is currently in wait state. Since it is specific to GPU2, it will always be allocated to GPU2 even if all the resources become available once the top three workloads have completed execution. Round robin policy rotates between the specified resources. The fourth workload will be allocated to the resource that becomes available first, that is here the CPU on completion of the first workload. Auto-tune policy relies on runtime profiling information to make the best choices of resource allocation. While dynamic load policy selects the resource with the least outstanding submissions. As shown here, after the top two workloads have completed execution, both the GPUs become available. But following the priority queue of the green colored workload, it will be assigned to GPU2. In this video, I talked about the main components of 1DPL, namely Parallel API, Sickle Kernels API, and the newly added Device Selection API. I encourage you to get started with 1DPL to add advanced parallelism to your core C++ applications. Detailed resources to know more about it are available in the video description. Check out the 1DPL core samples on GitHub and try your hands on the library on Intel Developer Cloud Platform. Thank you for watching. Thank you.